Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine and this is your podcast, Sunday Night Podcast. I'm your host, Khalid Mohidin, and this is where we talk about cricket, lay back, talk about everything in life. We bring on some special guests and we just talk about everything that has happened in the last week. Basically, we just catch up with each other. But today, it's going to be a special show. Um, we obviously have a special guest with us that we're going to be introducing to you very, very soon. And we want to talk to him about his life and and how he has actually risen to fame over the last couple of months and actually over the last year. I mean, that's where his, his videos have been completely viral on Twitter and on Instagram and on TikTok and so many other platforms. And I mean, obviously he's had interviews on the news as well. And we thought that we'll get his commentary on the test series and it's particularly this um, topic that we're talking about today, which is all about Quinton de Kock and whether he should be captain, whether he should not be. We're going to open up the, the channel as well for people to call in. We're going to have some callers calling in throughout the show as well. But before we get going, guys, don't forget to please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell, obviously, for all future videos as well. We opened up the Super Chat. If you want to ask specific questions, we are hoping that there's going to be a lot of questions in this particular episode. So if you have a lot of questions, please get involved with the Super Chat. There's a dollar sign in the bottom right-hand corner, which you can click on to obviously contribute. We also have a Patreon, and it's now obviously open for you guys to be able to click on and join this conversation, as well as join this community and join our journey. And that's what it's all about. So I'm not going to do too much introducing of our guests. I'm going to play you a little clip, something that was got to do with the last series that South Africa's played. So without further ado, here's something that you can get to know him a little better. Tough start for the Proteus. Yeah, extremely tough. Um, listen, going down 1-0 in the two-match test series kind of just puts in such a back foot because obviously the series went out the window and the best you can do now is play for the draw. But no, the, the Proteus will know. I mean, they um, they left a few runs out there in the first innings. I think that's where the game was won. The game was lost. Um, I think um, they'll know that um, once you get, don't get the foundation in the first innings, you sort of put yourself on the back foot. I mean, you can't pass matric without passing grade one. So you need that foundation to set yourself up in the chess match. And from there, you go, you get up to a good start and then you're playing with house money. So yeah, the Proteus, the Proteus will know that the first thing is you, you need to get better and improve on that. I thought the bowling display wasn't, it could have been better, but yeah, I think once you don't give yourself too much runs to play with, you're always on the back foot. Have the conditions played a role? Yeah, they definitely did. Um, listen, the wicket was spinning more than seven-year-old girls playing ring a ring a rosy at first break. Um, so... It was very, very tricky, you know, for us. We don't use those conditions. Um, Pakistan got experience in those conditions, so we need to find a way to quickly adapt and yeah, and get used to those conditions. Because, you know, a wise man once said, you know, um, you can buy a pint and cook at BP, but you can't buy experience. And we'll learn from this. I think, so we learn from this. We, we've gotten a bit of experience to take to the next test. And yeah, I think also playing away from home is tough, you know, in a different country, different bed, you know, different showers, different meals. So yeah, you, you miss the, the home comforts. And obviously Pakistan, they get to sleep in their own beds. That makes a massive difference. Um, but yeah, I think going to the next test, we'll hope we're looking to bounce back. Where to from here? Uh, for Pakistan, probably same old, same old. They'll, they'll look to have a, a repeat of this test in the next one. And for the pro test, I think they'll, lead, they'll, look, they'll look to Aiden Markham and Rasif Nadir and his motivation and showing that they can survive in these, in these conditions and, and how well they played in the first innings and then use that as motivation to, to build from there. I think the, the pro test can bounce back and they'll be looking to bounce back. And yeah, you know, I think they can turn this around and yeah, really looking forward to the second test. <laughs> that was Kuhle Sonkosi talking about the test and I'm so, it's it's brilliant actually it's it's I'm going to talk about this as a critic that someone that that loves um, movies and uh, loves um, comedy and so many other things it's the perfect balance between giving facts and also as well as making it comedic as well so without further ado here's our guest welcome to the show Kuhle so great to have you here <laughs> Hey Khalid, um, thanks so much for having me. Um, great, in- thanks for the thanks for that great intro as well. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so just give us a bit of a history to the guys out there that don't know. How did you start doing this? Um, how did it start happening for you? Um, it's very simple. I'm just a I'm a guy who loves uh, sports. I love I'm fanatical about sports and I love comedy. So for me, it was trying to find a way to to bridge the gap between the two and just make interviews on real life stuff um obviously so for people who don't like sports as also well, they can relate to it and yeah one video led to another and then yeah now this is blown up and it's gone really crazy yeah what platform particularly did you first start seeing a lot of retweets uh, was it retweets on twitter or was it more like follows and likes on tiktok i'm not really on tiktok so i don't really know how it works <laughs> but uh where, what was the platform that really made it 
your change your life forever? Um, it started for Twitter, and then I think with Twitter, I just uh, um, I the one video I did, I think I did a haircut one, and it got a lot more likes and retweets than all my videos have gotten. So then I started mm-hmm. to figure out like this is getting really crazy. And then obviously Instagram went quite big on Instagram, and yeah, I think it's it's just been so crazy to see the response of the videos, especially the early response and yeah, and the opportunities that that have come from from those from that response. So that's been really cool. Yeah, you obviously have a, a rugby back background as well, but uh, you have a love of cricket. Um, is there is there a moment that you would say that really drew you to the sport of cricket and made you fall in love with that game as well? Um, cricket was actually the first sport my dad taught me to play when I was a kid. Um, okay. It's a it's a very it's the it's a, the first sport I ever fell in love with. Um, I've I've loved cricket since I, since I could walk. I remember, I think I was about. Two or three, my dad told me, like, first time I, I got given a bat, my first sporting memory is playing cricket outside and my dad throwing um, little acorns at me and I had a little bat and I was hitting them on the roof. And awesome. that's, So cricket's, cricket's always been a massive part of my life. It's, um, I'm not as good as it, at cricket as I am as, as rugby, so I think the rugby, that's how I went the rugby route. I was a bit of a better rugby player, but yeah, cricket is oh, massive. I love it. Have you have you had any guys like any cricket guys reach out to you and have a chat with you on social media or, or DM you? <laughs> yeah, quite a few. Um, uh, Lungin Giri has uh, gotten hold of me, so that was really cool. Um, then I yeah. got a follow from Rasi Van Edison and Tim Bovuma, so and uh, Darren to Pavilion. So, so it's been um, it's been really cool. The response has gotten, and uh, it's it's quite nice to for some of the cricketers to to actually really enjoy it. So yeah, it's been it's been yeah. really cool. Dane Pete so we as know- well on Twitter. So that's been cool. Okay, yeah. awesome, awesome man. So we know you on the one side of the camera. Who's shooting on the other side? Um, normally my brother at the start, so my brother's been doing it, so he's been um, the cameraman. Is, it, that's the hard part trying to convince him to to make the videos and to, to like to get him off his to get off his butt <laughs> of the couch to come and uh, record me. So that's been cool. But now since I've been back in school, I've roped in one of the one of the scholars to be my um, to be to be my cameraman. I've uh, had a strict trial process, and then um, he was actually he was actually my original. My original cameraman, and I started making the videos three years ago. So he sort of had a bit of a reunion. So now he's been he's been carrying the load since my brother's back home. Oh, that's awesome! And I'm hoping that when COVID, obviously, if when COVID um, ends, etc., we'll be able to meet up and do a couple of videos in the future. That would be really awesome—a collaboration with you. Um, let's you know. start. <laughs> so let's start talking awesome. about. Yeah. So let's start talking about the topic today. So it's obviously Quentin de Cox. I'm going to bring on some of the other people that we have waiting because we really want to get into a discussion over here about the particular mm-hmm. topic. Um, before I bring on everybody else to maybe um, chat to you about it, what is your thoughts on Quentin de, Cap's, um, Quentin de Cox's captaincy so far? Um, are you one of the guys that would say, no, Quentin should stay captain, or do you think there's, it's too much pressure for him right now? Um, I think I think if you look at his form, it looks like it's a bit. Of, it looks like it's it's too much pressure on him right now. I don't think um, for me, I'm not necessarily worried in terms of him as a captain. I'm more worried about his batting and his. We're not getting the best out of Quinton to Cock, and it looks like he, he he's a sort of player that's, you know, that's free flowing and attacking and, and and what you call it, he's always going at the opposition and he, he's such a game changer. And I think with the captaincy, he sort of pulled back a bit. He's got he's got in the shell. And I think also I think and that's obviously with him not playing well. I think as a captain, I think if you look at most international captains when they form when they form doesn't go well then you can see how it affects the leadership and it affects mm-hmm. it seems like everything is not going it seems like any, everything is not going well so for me i'm more in the camp of yeah i just want to see him back to his best and i don't know what if it will take him not being captain i think if he gets back to his best the approaches will benefit from that mm-hmm. mm. These things, like I did a whole article actually today. Yeah? I did so much research. I, I probably spent two days to write the article. I think it's the longest <laughs> I've ever taken to write an article before in my life. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah. What I wrote about is I kind of went through Quentin the Cox history and checked at all his batting positions that he's batted in yeah. and tried to see averages, etc., and how he's batted in certain positions. But it was more about talking about how he um, deals with certain situations. Now, yeah. the research that I got from it is... Um, basically, when Quentin comes out of the middle, a lot of the times there's a massive batting collapse. Majority of the times in in his career, he's come out of the middle 
when there's a massive batting collapse. So he doesn't necessarily bat as a conventional number seven when there's a lot yeah. of runs on the board. I looked at Adam Gilchrist's figures because a lot of people like to compare him to Adam Gilchrist as well. Mm -hmm. And he batted the majority of his year, career at number seven. But out of the 12 centuries that he scored, um, only four of them, Australia was under 100 before he walked sure. to the crease. So that means that six of the, uh, the way more of them, um, obviously seven, eight <laughs> of them, he came out of the middle when there was more than 200 on the board. He was, so I think when he scored his, um, his double century, there was almost three, over 300 runs on the board when he walked out to the middle. So it's a whole different ball game that mm. he's facing compared to Quinton de Kock. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of a <laughs> an extra thing that I had to say. Do you have, mm. <laughs> do you have, do you have an opinion on where exactly he should bat? Um, I, I've always believed that he should bet between. Uh, I, I like him at six. I think at six, he can, I think at six, he's a he's a he's a massive game changer. And I think for us, I think for me, I, I see Quentin as that sort of player, like you said. If he walks into bet, for me, if if, if you if the Proteas are three hundred for four or two eighty for four, and then Quentin de Kock comes into bet, if if, if you're the opposition, you you start to drop your head a little bit because you're thinking, oh Jesus, so can quickly take the game away from us. We can quickly go from two eighty for four to 400 very quickly. He can come in and score 100 in a session. He can come in and just change and just change the nature of the innings. And I think, I th obviously, I think he's good enough and talented enough to bat four or, but but I, I definitely think that I'm happy with him coming in at six and just taking the game away from the opposition. I think that's that's his biggest strength. And I think that's something that it will benefit the Proteus a lot more. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So let's bring on the rest of our panel. We've got Emily Norris, who really wanted to get you on the show. We have Ravi <laughs> Reddy, who actually tweeted you to get you on the show. And then we've got Lubo Balo as well. So welcome to the show, everyone. I'm really excited for this. Emily, I'm going to start with you. Um, is there anything that you want to ask, Kukle? Uh No. <laughs> actually, not at this point. Uh, you, you, you caught me off guard. Um, nothing right now. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, I know Ravi's waiting there in, in anticipation to ask you a few questions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Cooks, you won the toss. What are you going to do? <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to take I'm, I'm going to take him, man. So I will, I, I'm, I'm always going to bat first. That's um, looking at the conditions. Uh, look at these conditions. Uh, you got to you, you look up before you That's look it. down. A lot, of, a lot of people look at the pitch and they go like, oh, um, it's a turning. I'm like, no, you got to look up. Look at the conditions. Uh, no, no cloud in sight. You got to have a bat. Awesome, absolutely. <laughs> I could have said a bit of myself. Welcome to the show, man. Good to Thanks, have you guys. On. Thanks for having you. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so guys, you heard what me and, and, and Cook said, uh, obviously, about the cock. Um, Lubu Balu, you always have strong comments over here. I think, uh, I think it's your turn first to give yourself opinions. You've read my piece. You're probably going to rubbish it as well. Um, you are, You also got a fan in the comments, Mr. Cricket Connoisseur, which I'm surprised he didn't call into the show. He's a bit of a coward when you come on the show. <laughs> I thought I, I thought he was gonna come through, but um, okay, it's, it's cool. Um, yeah, uh, I listened. I listened to you guys, and I I think I I read the article. I don't blame the folks for coming at you. I don't blame them. Uh, <laughs> I don't blame them at all. They should grill you for that article. But yeah, um, on a serious note, now I'm I'm, I'm with Uuguli in terms of um, Quentin's batting position. For me. It's either Quentin bats at one or two, or he bats six or seven. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of person who believes in playing people where they are most effective. I don't, I don't always look at um, whether someone's too talented to bat um, where. Look at A.B. De Villiers. He had so much talent. They tried him as an opener, didn't work out. Instead of that, they moved him to a position that works. Quinton, 6'7", that's where he's most effective. There's no need for us to move him. And, and something interesting is the fact that I've, I've, I've actually been paying attention. Whenever they move him up, his average has never gone up from, 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 from my, my thingy from when I've noticed. His average always goes down. So for me, it's, I've, I've said this before on social media. You have Quinton Tikok, he's already there. He's one of the senior players on the side. You can't move him to fit other people into the team. He must stay wherever he is. Then you pick guys that are going to complement him. So if you feel like having Rassi at three is not good for Quinton Tikok, then it means Rassi shouldn't be in the team. I'm just making an example. If you feel having Faf at five is, 
it requires Quinton to bat higher, it means you shouldn't have Faf in the team. Remember, Quinton's our best batsman. We all agree on that. Never mind his form. Form is not going to change the fact that he's our best batsman. So what this means, you need to pick guys who are going to complement Quinton to cook because he's already in the team. Imagine now changing KG from being an opening bowler because you want to fit in other bowlers. It wouldn't make sense. KG is a strike bowler. When you pick bowlers, you pick bowlers who are going to support him. Bowlers who are going to compliment him. And now with regards to the captaincy, I think the fact that he doesn't want the captaincy is more than enough. The fact that he did not want the captaincy is looks. I think I think it's Mark Mark Hazen, Hazeman who said he looks um, he looks like a reluctant captain. Or it's one of the commentators in the um, One Day Cup. He he's not enjoying it. He doesn't smart the captaincy. We don't have to force it on him. I don't even want to go deeper and 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 overanalyze his captaincy because his, his captaincy in Test cricket is always going to be found wanting. To be honest. Um, in the shorter format, you get away with a lot of things. Um, but uh, Tennessee, you go ahead with even having you go away with even having a David Miller behind the stumps. But in Test cricket, Test cricket is so long that if you're not a strong captain, whether it be it um, in terms of your field settings, um, decision making, and stuff like that, you're always going to get exposed because Test cricket is so long. Um, mm. One thing I noticed from him in the last Test is that he he looked like he, he was hot for. Uh, there was a point he was just standing there and looking at, I think it was Lungi or KG. You could see the man was defeated. Now then, I say, set him free from the captaincy and let him play, batting him in the position where he actually throws runs. There's no need There's no need for, 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 for them to force the captaincy on him. There's so many options. You can even give it to Dean Elga, even though he's not going to be your long-term solution. Just give it to him for now until uh, whoever it is that they're waiting for to make captain comes through. Because right now we're losing matches and we're losing Quentin. You know, my thing is where I notice it the most when it comes to Quentin is especially in his post-match British conferences as well as in his post-match interviews. Even in his pre-match stuff, he doesn't seem interested. He's playing with his nails and he's just chilling there and he's looking. Now, Quentin's a magnificent cricketer and he has an amazing cricketing brain, but he's never been into the media side of things. He's never liked it. I've, I've always known that. It was, um, I've done a couple of interviews with him before and um, it's not the easiest thing to do it always. Sometimes it is and sometimes it is. It depends what Quentin, how Quentin Cock is feeling. I think that we should do what Faf did for the toss and we should get um, Cooks to do the post-match press conferences rather or the post-match interviews. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I think he got it there. He spot on. <laughs> Cooks, um, is there anything you want to say about that um, with regards to the media and the way he dresses with the media? I think, um, like you said, I think what you said is spot on. It's someone that's, if you're not... Um, a big fan of being in the media and that's fine you know obviously you, you've got to be involved in the media you've got to speak to the media but if that's something cause that's a big part of captaincy i mean uh, if you look at all test captains retired test captains they they, they they speak a lot about the media and the media pressures and, and having to front up and having to you know talk to the media i mean i look at someone like graham smith how well he was always good at the media faf was always always good at the media and um yeah so i think if if he's not comfortable with, with being involved in the media and being in front of the media then what why do we force him to do it? You know, um, why is he forced to do it? So I think, like like Luba said, like if you're not if you're not comfortable with being in front of the media, you can you can almost see it. And so like, and, and that's a massive part of captaincy because I mean, he speaks for the team. He's 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 the link between us as fans and the media and the team. And if we if he's not doing that part well, then it's hard for us to to gauge what's actually really going on with the proteas. Yeah, especially that uh, that clip that you posted, Emily. When you saw that clip initially, what was your first reaction of Quentin um, when he when he had that response? <laughs> yeah, I think the first thing I did was was laugh. To be honest, um, I mean, he clearly is. I mean, yeah, he's he's upset because he obviously doesn't know what to do about the the batting collapses. He doesn't know how to fix the batting collapses, and. I mean, the media asked him a question. He's annoyed. He doesn't want to be captain. <laughs> the last thing he wants to answer is, "How do I fix a batting collapse?" So, I don't know. I, I shame. I thought it. I found it funny, um, but I also felt a bit sorry for him because he really isn't like like Luba was saying. Like he really isn't keen on being captain. We all knew that already. Um, 
And it was the same commentator who actually said it, like, yes, Dean, I mean, he might not be a, a full-on captain or he might not be a long-term captain, but um, get him in there for, for a bit and groom Aidan Markram to be captain. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Kuni, shame, Kuni definitely wasn't keen on that question and he could see it in his answer. So, yeah. Ravi, I know you're a big fan of Quinny. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Quinny. Um, but uh, I'll give the Paul Pogba finger wave to Luba there. Because in my opinion, I don't think Quinny... Obviously, he's, uh, he's the, one of the best batsmen in the world without question. But in the current situation, it's clearly Dean Elgar. That title belongs to him. He's been the main man in the, age, in the subcontinent. Uh, he scored a century against India. He's uh, done well against Sri Lanka, and now he's going to do well against Pakistan in Karachi. If people still read newspapers, they'll say, Alga scores a ton in Karachi. You know, so just, just watch, watch that space. I think Alga is the right guy. Um, I know uh, Mpo Moriki, who normally comes onto the show, he actually said it quite uh, well when he mentioned that uh, when they were deciding on a captain, it felt like they were kicking a can down the road. You know, they weren't sure what to do. You know, who wants it, who wants it, who wants it. Hot potato, hot potato. Throw it at Quinny. Quinny's holding it, but it's scorching his hands in the process. And uh, to be honest with you, you can't have somebody leading a team who's reluctant to do it in the first place. Um, you know, you can't have somebody twiddling their thumbs if they, you know, if they really don't want to be there. It needs to be somebody that's committed to the job. Um, and the unfortunate thing for him is that Legacy always speaks volumes. You know, you've got a guy like Graham Smith who's got a stellar record and the guy always had a plan for everything. And um, by no means am I saying he's the greatest captain to ever live, but in the South African context, I think that certainly uh, speaks for itself, his record at least. And I think we just need somebody who, who's taken this job as serious as uh, to that extent. You need somebody that's you need a personality that's really going to be strong and aggressive that's actually going to take uh, the game back to that level, to that extent, uh, to punch uh, somebody in the jugular. You know, you need you need that captain to sort of uh, lead you. So, I mean, I don't know, Cooks, I don't know if you're available, but, uh, uh, you know, there, there's certainly a vacancy. If, if Quinny, Quinny clearly doesn't want the job, so if you want it, by all means, at least just do the toss, as Khalid says, and you don't have to bat, you know, you just give the bat to Quinny and, you know. Let him do his thing. Yeah, as long as long as as long as I don't have to as long as I don't have to bat or <laughs> as then I'm fine. I'm happy with that. As long as yeah, I think I, I, I can I can roll my arm for for a couple of overs or two. Um, it, they don't turn much, but um, yeah, I think it will do. But um, yeah, as long as I'm not facing um any any bowling and yeah, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be in the slips for for good chats and uh, motivation. Don't, don't ask me to catch much, but um, I think I can provide that. You know, you ever get that feeling when you're watching somebody uh, do very well in a cricket match? Like, I watched Shabnam just now. She just got a five. For, I mean, it's, this is my title. And my arms are stiff as hell. I don't know what, what happened. I just tweak something and it's like I can barely move the thing. But anyway, so, sorry. That's just slightly uh, beyond the point there. But definitely, um, I think you can't give the, the role to a reluctant individual. Um, I agree with Luba's sentiments. Uh, lo- drop them down the order. Let's uh, cut these dispersions, cancel them all out. This whole story of Quinny at five, Quinny after all this, Quinny opened the said, you know, I think we're at a point now where we might even ask the guy to open the bowling at some point, you know? Um, you know, it, it's just it's getting ridiculous to us. I think let's just go back to the norm, let's go back to conventional situations. What we're trying to do is we're trying to accommodate Quinny at five and as a result had a ripple effect on the entire batting order. And I think Luba sums it up quite well there. Yeah, Luba, you can say a few things. Um, yeah, I just, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I just want to say it's it's, it's a bit disappointing because if you go back to um, when they announced Quinton as the white ball captain, we were told that he's not going to be test captain. Um, it took them weeks to announce test captain, and out of the blue now, they're telling us Quinton is captain for, for the Sri Lankan series. They said only that series. And then that series came. Um, it was done and dusted. And we're going to Pakistan. Squad is announced. And they're telling us Quinton is, is, is captain. I think I remember I wrote, it was a long piece a few weeks ago about how it, it, it does show a bit of lack of um, planning. It, it seems a bit disorganized in my opinion. 
Um, I wish they would just make that bold call, whoever they want to make, because I can tell you now, they know who they want um, to be captain. Um, they know who their captain is, but maybe, <clears throat> sorry, maybe they they just don't feel like it's the right time. Um, but I, out of 11 guys, you want to tell me he's the only, he's the only viable option to be captain. Like, not even out of 11 guys, out of that huge squad they picked there. At this point in time, I don't even mind them picking someone to make his debut as a player and captain in the same match, as long as Quinton is not going to be captain. Because <clears throat> you can see that he's not even enjoying his cricket anymore. And, 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 and once that happens, once a player stops enjoying his cricket, um, his home is always going to be an issue. So... For me personally, I don't mind Quentin betting at five, even though I feel it's not going to work out. And um, he's not that type of player. Um, yes, he's talented, um, but it doesn't mean that um, every talented batsman is going to be a top four batsman, top five batsman. Um, but yeah, I feel like they need to free Quentin because you can see, even when he walks, you can see that. Have you seen Quentin in a World Cup match, for example? His eyes popping up. You can see he's thinking about so many things. And then you see Quinton in the World Cup match face 20 balls for five runs. It's That's the Quinton I keep seeing where he walks out as test captain. I want the Quinton who just comes and plays his free cricket. Don't make him captain. He doesn't mind keeping the gloves, so it's fine. You can let him keep the gloves, but free him of the captaincy. Yeah, because I specifically in the article, I didn't want to mention what my point of view was on his batting position. I could see that people were blaming, yes, it's because he's batting at five is the reason. And the the whole point of the article was to open up the discussion because I wanted to see what people say. Because currently, Boucher believes that he was batted at five and that's his position. Batting me at seven is coming in majority of the time when our top order collapses. We need to sort out our top order. He can't be coming in there when we're 100 for, for five or 100 for six every single time. It's not it's not how it, I mean, 100 for five every single time. It's not how it should be. Um, we need at least three him to come in this situation. Like Cook said, um, you want him to come into a situation where there's 320 on the board, 240 on the board, 250 on the board, and come and take the game away from you. Um, that's what the Quinny way we want to see more often. Like I said, there's only... In the five centuries that he scored, there's only one time on time that he came out to the middle when we had over 250, 300 on the board. Every single other time, it was under 200 runs that he came to the middle. With his half centuries as well at number seven, if you look at the ninth the half centuries that he scored, I think it's six of them that he came out to the middle when we were under 100, I mean, or under 150. Every single time he comes to the crease when he's under 200 on the board and he has to turn things around, it's, it's not fair on him, it's not fair on his... Um, on, on anything because kind of he runs out of partners that's what happens in the end of the day he actually runs out of partners thanks a lot for the super chat um chepo um this wants to say that i want to know who the panel would be captain and um emily i'm gonna let you speak first before we answer that question cool thanks um i just wanted to add on to what lipo was saying like i mean at, at first when he wasn't supposed to be test captain but then when he when he came in captaining I mean, they said it would be a short-term captaincy. So my, I'm just interested to know is like how long is short-term? You know, um, how long are they still going to keep him as captain? Um, and you know, him not scoring, him not playing his natural game, or not being feel like feeling feeling like he can play his natural game. Like how how much longer is it going to go on? Um, so yeah, we definitely. I mean, there was a discussion they were speaking about in the in the one-day cup. The commentary they were saying. The, the one commentator was saying, like, he would even bring in a, a new skipper for the next test match already. It doesn't matter if it's the middle of a test, ma test match. It doesn't matter if the series hasn't ended yet. He would do it straight away. He wouldn't wait for the series to be over. So that's quite an interesting point. Um, I, I doubt they would do that. But that would be interesting because I don't think it would actually make a difference if they had to wait till after the series or if they had to do it now. Um, so, yeah, it's just a matter of how long are they going to wait before they actually bring in someone else to catch him. Yeah, but I also think that we shouldn't actually throw our toys out of, the, out of the cot quite yet. Because, I mean, we're talking about Quentin Lukaku over here that has gone through a bad spell. I mentioned it in Article 2. There was a period that he went through a spell of 15 games without scoring a half century. I mean, it was it, it's, it happens to batsmen, it happens to players. And he came back and then he started scoring. Remember, it's only been five innings that he hasn't scored a, scored a half century now. It's not like it's been a crazy amount of time. And only four of them he was captain. So 
we, we, we have to look at it in that way as well, um, that we can't, um, we can't run away with it as well um, and say, okay, cool guys, Quinton is it's because of the captaincy or no. We don't actually have enough data to be able to see. Yes, we can see he's uninterested. We don't know if his mental state is because of the bubble, whether it's the captaincy, whether it's having all those roles. It could be because of the bubble. Quinton's the type of guy that likes to go out and go fish, be out in nature. He can't do all of those things with anymore as much as he could now because he's in from bubble to bubble. It must have been it's, it's crazy amount of months, six, well, over six, seven months that he's been with, or even more because he was in India for the IPL. So he's been from bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble. And for a guy like Quinter that wants to be out in nature, fishing, going for hikes, doing all of those type of things, it can be very taxing on your soul and it can be very taxing on your mind. But let's answer the question. I'm going to get Google the first opportunity to answer the question. And that's thanks a lot again, Chepo, for the, for the super chat. And um, everybody's going to answer this question and say who they want to see as the captain. Oh, I think I think it's it's not as easy as it's not an easy answer, but I think uh, for me it's the, I think the big problem is like do you make someone like Adam Markram captain even though he's he's just got back in the team and he's trying to obviously get some form back and get some runs back and you and you don't want to be like okay cool Aiden you're back in the team and now you got a captain the side as well so now he's a narrative like man I'm still trying to fight for my place I'm still trying to you know convert my starts and he's got big pressure on him. I just think for me, you've got to go. I think captaincy. The first thing is the guy's got to, it's got to be someone that's in the team. We can will test in, test out, and then at the moment that's Dean Elgin. I think a bit of experience as well is that's what you'll bring to the job. Even if it's even if it's short term, even if you say to him, Dean, can you do this job for for two years? Almost um, if you look at like a, a, a Tim Payne sort of role. Tim Payne is a little bit older, but he's come in as he's come in and, and captain the side and steer the show for Australia. Obviously, struggled in India, but against India, but like he's coming and steered the ship and he, he, he obviously, they haven't seen Tim Payne as a long-term option. They don't see Tim Payne capturing Australia for, for 10 years. It's a nice little two-year option, three or four-year option to get them through the rough patch. I think someone like Alga can play that role just to get just to get us through this rough patch we are now. Because I think to ask someone like Aiden or, 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 or Bavuma or someone like that to captain while still trying to, because they're still trying to fight for the test careers. They're still fighting just to, to get back in. Just to stay in the side and establish and establish themselves in the side again, because, and and I, I firmly believe the first thing about a captain is they've got to earn, they've got to, they've got to be in the team. I mean, they've got to be in the team by merit. You, you don't want a situation when the guy's in the team because he's captain, and then mm-hmm. they don't do well. Then the media's on their, then the media's on their case. Then it's like, man, this guy, he's probably he's struggling to get runs. He should be should he be in the team or should he not? But it's like it's, he's kept now he's not captaining well as well. So I think. The logical choice for me is is Dean Elgar, unless like, and, and maybe Dean Elgar does on the job, but I think I, I can't see anyone else being captain at the moment other than, other than Dean Elgar. What do you guys think? Yeah, you know, when I interviewed Dean Elgar back in the first game of the four day franchise series, I spoke to him about that, and he told me directly um, that the logical choice would be for him to be test captain, and we put out that story in a went completely viral everywhere all over the place and um okay not as viral as you cooks but it, it went semi-viral um <laughs> and uh, a lot of people um, spoke about it and were writing opinion pieces about whether he's the right guy i thought that at the time dean alga was the right choice and i agree with you 100 percent because i feel like him and aiden have such a good relationship and at the titans they've built such a good relationship and now going into the protest they they hang out together on the weekends, they pry together, they do all sorts of things together. So they, they're very close um, as, as friends first, as well as obviously batting together at the top of the order. It would kind of be the perfect mentor for someone like Aiden and, and, and make Aiden vice captain. It would be good, good mm. opportunity to do that. Then maybe Dean can tell Aiden, look here, make this decision for me. You know, like try and make this decision for the spell. Maybe you make the decision on who's going to bowl next. And you can give that opportunity to and they can discuss it. And he says, okay, cool. I trust you enough to make this decision on who should um, bowl this particular spell on the next 10 overs, etc. Set the field for him. All of those type of things. So, yeah. Um, as, especially because Dean is the number one opener in the world at the moment in the last two years. I mean, test cricket. I mean, he's earned it. I couldn't believe it, actually. It, it, it was true. It's true what he said. He is the logical choice. And if... You're going to be so confident and speak like that to the media and tell them that I'm the logical choice for captain. Make me captain, basically. I mean, 
there's your answer already. Not to a guy that's like mm, ifing and eyeing if he wants to be it. Um, I don't know if you want to add on to that, Cooks. Yeah, I agree with you. I think if he feels like, if, if he's confident, confident to say like, you know, I feel like I'm the logical choice, then that's him stepping up and saying, you know, I want the job. And I, I totally agree with you on the, on Aiden, if, if Dean Elgar to get the job, then Aiden Markram or the, or the next captain they have as vice captain. I mean, if you look at Australia, they did it for many years. When Steve Waugh was captain, Ricky Ponting was the vice captain. When Ricky Ponting took over, Michael Clark was the vice captain. And and they captained the side, obviously. And, and they and, and they learn from a captain like that. And you spend all the time learning from him. even And just making decisions and standing in the slips, knowing what's happening and sort of grooming him. And, you know, I think for me, that that, that would be the best way to go. And I just think you just, you just, you just free up someone like, Quinn de Kock, when you release the shackles and you don't have to be captain, you all you have to worry about is keeping and scoring runs. And Dean Alga, if he's, he's he, he wants to handle the pressure of of batting and then and and capping the start, then then like I mean, then let the guy do the job. And I think mm-hmm. and I think he can do a good job. That's an excellent point. So, um, Ravi, who's your choice? Look, I I echo the sentiment. Dean Alga, without question, uh, will be my number one pick uh, as well. Um, and I think Cooks uh, raised a valid point as well. You mentioned the Australians as an example. Because um, I remember uh, there seemed to be a significant uh, line, like a succession plan, if you will, starting from Mark Taylor, going to Steve War, and then that got passed on to Ricky Ponting, and that got passed on to, to Michael Clark. It seemed to be like a genius move every time there was somebody who was ready to step up. They gave them that person at the rightful mantle, the rightful title. and. I think the common factor with all four of those individuals is that the first step is each and every one of them wanted the job, right? Let's, let's make no mistake. Every one of those dudes in the Australian camp, they wanted the job to start off with. And I think, again, it comes back to the old reluctant captain story. We need to avoid that whole art to be. If Dean is the guy, uh, as Cook says, as you said also, Khalid, you, you interviewed the man himself. Uh, if he said he wanted the job, give the man the job. Uh, as if these people are treating it like a hot potato game. Uh, give the man the job and I guarantee you the results will come. The good results at least. Um, and I, I like the fact that we're talking about him uh, potentially bringing in Markram under his wing and saying, you know what, as like sort of a tutelage type of thing, let's get him up to speed. Or better yet, uh, whomever the the other younger players are that would respond well to, to Dean Alga's uh, sort mm. of captaincy. That, that's the idea. I think that it, we need to think about the theme of succession planning because I think that's where we've we've gone wrong. We Firstly, we've cocked it up for the batting order. Secondly, we gave the captaincy to a guy who doesn't want the job, you know? You know? Uh, it's crazy. I think, to be honest with you, it's literally been a game of hot potatoes since Ash gave up the captaincy uh, almost five years back now. Um, it's maniacal, absolutely maniacal. I want to ask Lubo next, but um, Lubo, I want to ask you to answer this question and then give your your point. Um, let's just give it to Aiden, like we did with Smith. Build something long term instead of chopping and changing. Build a team around Aiden, the cock, Nokia, and KG for the next decade. Uh, what are your thoughts on that particular comment, Lubo? And then you can give us as well your option. Um, I'm a bit sad. I don't. Um, I don't see Mulder and Lungi on that, on that list there, because I believe they they will form part um, of the team's core going forward. But I but I agree with um, um, Gobind that we we should build the team around those guys, um, guys like KG, Winston. They no longer the future. Um, they're the guys who are going to carry the team. Um, obviously, guys like Aiden, um, Anna, they're still relatively new. But also, it's only a matter of time before all of them are the core senior group of the side, um, together with Lungi, um, together with um, Willem Mulder, Willem stay fit. Um, I hope they can stay fit for, for quite some time. And to with Aiden Makram, I sort of... Um, the captaincy. I just want to disagree with something here in terms of Aiden. Personally, I've never felt um, he was on the brink of being dropped. Uh, I feel his career has gone. It has taken a route that most careers have taken. Um, he started like a house on fire, and then there was a, there was a time where 
he was struggling. Um, it, it happens to most batsmen. It happens to most um, players. When you're new, it happens that you, if you start like a house on fire, there's a point where it sort of drops. So I feel like South Africans were a bit impatient with, with, with Aiden because he had like two or three series and everyone was like, no, Aiden should be dropped and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but with, with, with the captaincy, for me, I feel uh, I'm not a fan of Dean Elgar's captaincy. Um, I watched him captain in England and I, I was sad. It made me sad. But um, but I'm not gonna lie. He he's the logical choice. He's the choice that makes sense. Um, but is he the right choice for captain though? Because I believe logical and right, the two of them in this context are quite different. Dean Elgar may be the logical choice, but is he the right choice? I'm not sure. Um, Luba, he's type of you, captain. Luba, if, but if you had like uh, a decision, if you had to make a decision like tomorrow morning. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to that. I'm going to that. I'm going to that. Who makes um, you less sad? Let's find out. Who makes you less sad? Um, I would have liked to see. <laughs> I would have liked to see a bit of bravery. Um, I've, I've always earmarked Aiden Markram as the next captain. Uh, uh, but he's all struggling with. I think he hasn't really been struggling for form. What has been happening? Happening to him is natural, but because we, we we've been criticizing him, it has led to him that he's struggling for form. It's a bit of a technicalities here, but yeah, I'd say give it to Dean Elga and then have Aiden Markram as as his vice captain for now. Um, but it's not a decision that I would really back hundred percent. Okay, Aiden hasn't only been under pressure when it comes to just being able to be an opening batsman which is probably in south africa the most the most difficult job to do um and to come in as a young opener and have, having to know that you have to carry the team because of the because of people retiring big name players retiring he was lucky enough to come to the team when amra was there when, D, when ab was still there he was lucky enough but as soon as they left and we never found replacements for them which we still try struggling to, to, this, to this day to replace the automatically your opening batsmen are under a hell of a lot of pressure because if you go out and you look behind you and you're not confident that the next person is going to score runs that's going to put an extra pressure on you and not only that you get thrown into the deep end by going to india opening in india with a new interim coach that has never had the opportunity sri lanka as well been thrown under the bus in sri lanka as well he never played face spinning conditions like that i mean for anybody in their first tour in the subcontinent they're going to take a couple of games to get used to it not everybody's going to start playing like um Sashim to Duka on spinning tracks. I mean, everybody's going to have to take their time. I mean, Joe Root took his time to be able to play in innings like he did recently against Sri Lanka. He took his time to get there. Um, everybody needs to be able to do that. Um, M, I just want to ask you as well, who was your cho choice of as captain? Um, before I answer that question, I'm a massive fan of Afghu Pussy. Um, don't think he should have been dropped, but I mean, I guess that's a whole other debate. Um, but I, I don't know. I think... I think I'm agreeing with you guys here. Um, Dean Dean Alba seems like the definitely the logical choice, but um, agreeing with Kukle, like he, I don't think he should be um, long term. Uh, maybe just that two two year stint um, while Markram is sort of being groomed and, and those types of things, and then bring Markram in. Um, but Khalid, I think what you were saying is like for me, Aiden Markram is not necessarily um, out of form. Maybe he's just out of runs. Um, I think those are two different things. Um, so I think he's, he's been in form. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a brilliant batsman. He's been doing well, but like you said, he's just been under pressure and under criticism. And um, maybe that's what's causing him um, not to score runs. But yeah, definitely go with Dean for now, yeah. How is Emily growing into this role, man? How is Emily growing into this? I'm loving your commentary. Even on the Offside Maiden show. Guys, you must go check out the Offside Maiden shows on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. So, guys, um, quickly, I just want you to, guys, to give some input maybe into the next series. Um, we are told by some pundits and by some people that Rawalpindi is not going to spin as much as what Karachi did. Um, that is going to be a little bit more um, seamer friendly. This obviously plays into South Africa's um, strengths, doesn't it? 
Yeah, definitely. I think um, obviously it's just tough for me. It's it's the semi friendly tracks for us. I think is we need guys. Obviously, we need that bounce. I think that's that's the big difference for us. So we need a bit of pace and a bit of bounce in the wicket. I think it may it may be a bit friendly to the seamers, but I mean we, we don't get that we don't get that bounce that you get obviously in South Africa. You get um, the carry you get here. Yeah, so I still think you go with the two spinners. I think you. I think I will still go in with the two spinners. You know, I think. For me in Asia, not to go with two spinners is, is 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 I think you're selling yourself a bit short. But um, I think for us, I think my biggest thing with in the next test is I would love for us to go with, a, with an extra batsman. I think um, oh, like I, I think that's the hard part. I think if, if you go, do you do you, do you take out uh, one of the seamers? Do you take out one of the, the spinners? Or because I feel like we are better short with Linda coming in at seven. So I think that's I think that's one of our biggest issues that we, especially that we're not batting as well as we should have. So I feel like. We should rather stack up our batters and and go in with an extra batsman and go in with, I mean, for me, I remember the approaches when when we were when, when we were at our best was with guys like Faf Duplessis and JP Dumi making their debuts and batting at seven. I mean, with Stian Van Sale scoring hundred against West Indies on debut and he came in at seven. I mean, so like we had such a long batting lineup and even when Dukok was there, like you you can have a lineup where Dukok is coming in at six or even even coming in at seven after six specialist batsmen and Dukok coming in and you they. they because I mean, like, if you have, you know, I still believe in, in I still believe in batters got a bat, bowlers got a bowl. So do, do you have the four, the four bowlers and the batsman. I think with Dukok, you have that luxury of adding an extra batsman. But I do think I'm more worried about the batting. And I think I'm more concerned. Like, I think we should really try and try and see if we can fit in another batsman. Yeah, and it's also about and like identifying how South Africa wants to play the cricket. I think we're still confused. <laughs> they have no clue what they want to do every single time is something different. I mean, they need to come up. And I think Lubo made that point on, the, on our review show, actually, about that. Um, come up with your with the idea of what you want, because then you can select players and then give them an opportunity over a long period of time. I mean, the dropping of Zubair Hamza after he had a great tour in subcontinent and then dropping him is, is, is weird to me, because, I mean... One of the only players to actually perform there, it was, it was quite weird for me. Okay, yes, he's currently off form and he's struggling for runs here in the four-day series. But um, there's a lot of things that I think that we need to give some youngsters opportunity right now. And maybe we can move up our experienced players. And, and I think Rassi counts as that because Rassi showed that he, he has the nerve to be able to bat a three. And then moving up Faf and moving up, I don't know about Quinny at the moment, put Quinny behind someone younger maybe. And then they have a five or six to have someone that is a little bit more move Pavum up to five and then bring a youngster in at six and then have Kwani behind them as protection, maybe. I'm opening the floor to anybody to discuss that one. <laughs> um I just I when I, I hear the uh, I, I, I will not then I know. <laughs> no, I just want to agree with what Kushe just said, Nana, about seven batsmen. Even myself, you know, um, I don't believe in making the tail um, short. I don't believe in making the tail long because I believe the minute you start looking at whether he can bat a bit, it means you're taking away the wicket-taking ability because most bowlers who can bat a bit uh, generally don't have the same strike rates as your um, Kahiso Rabada, as your Dale Stain. So for me, if you're a bowler, specialist bowler, you're a strike bowler. That's good enough for me. If you can score a 10, I'm okay with that. Top sevens, it's either they score runs or they carry the drinks. That's how it should be. Um, I don't like the idea of adding someone who can bat at eight and nine just because number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are not doing their job. It's their job. They get paid for it. It's either you do your job or you carry drinks. That's how it should be for me. Big mistake was leaving out Vian Mulder. I'm not going to lie. At seven. I believe in having a 7-4 split. Um, I know Mulder's an all-rounder, but he's a batting all-rounder. So for me, at 7, I prefer having a batting all-rounder or having a specialist batsman who can bowl. In this case, we're blessed we have Vian Mulder. A batting all-rounder? Why not put him there? Um, if you want to play two spinners, rather have Mulder at 7 and drop either... Um, and out or, or Lungi, depending on how the pitch is going to be. Because even though a lot of pundits say Raul Pindi is going to um, is not going to spin, uh, after how we played spin in the, in, 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 in the last test, Pakistan would be stupid to, to give us um, a pitch that's going to favor us. 
And I think that's exactly how, why they prepared the Karachi pitch like that, because they knew. Um, I think we've shown ourselves to the world that if you want to smack us around, just get us something that turns. It doesn't even have to turn, by the way. Um, that <laughs> Nauman guy, he wasn't even spinning the ball. He wasn't even, he spun one ball out of 500 balls that he bowled in the test match. But our batsman couldn't play him. It was, it was, it was frustrating. Um, one last thing I want to say. He's on the honest uh, board. If, I Aiden Mark on board. if, if, if Aiden Markram is going to face 250, 200 and how many balls for only 74 runs, I'm sorry, but that will never be good enough. Strike rate of 33%. You're betting in the third innings. I don't care how a lot of people think test cricket is just about facing 11 million dot balls. No, you still need to score runs. We were not playing for a draw. So I'm going to say this again. I've been saying it since the last test match. We need to, the team needs to sit down and decide this is how we want to play our cricket. This is a brand of cricket we want to play and we want to play a winning brand of cricket. Because I saw a lot of people saying uh, at least Aiden and Rassi fought. They fought in that what they thought we still lost you can you can go to click info now and check the scorecard of the match it, it's going to tell you that pakistan won you won't even see anything that says at least rassi and 80 to win back. okay guys i think that's the perfect way to end this conversation and i'm going to let emily give a final say ravi and then we can end off with kuhle yeah, um, <laughs> I think I'll just finish off um, Luba's little rant there. Um, I, I agree with what he's saying. Um, I just think there were far too many dot balls. Um, I think when, you, when you're when sort of facing so many dot balls, um, you get bogged down, and that's perhaps why no man um, got so many wickets. Um, we weren't getting runs off him, and um, he, he was just able to get to get wickets, and, and Yasin Ali as well. I'm sorry, Yasin Shah as well. So I think, like, that you know, facing so many dot balls is you're gonna you're gonna sort of get yourself into a hole, um, and that's when you're gonna um, lose wickets. Um, so I agree with Lua there. Um, and yeah, I don't know what we're speaking about before his rant. All I remember is that. <laughs> so that's the only thing I can comment on right now. But um, yeah. Cool, Ravi. Yeah. So um, I'm a kind of guy when I give a presentation, I like to make use of props. So whenever Norman Ali bowls at the top six. I think he pretty much sees this over there. <laughs> you see that? What is two ears? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I, I think that uh, this is going to be quite an interesting test. I agree with Luba's sentiments as well that there's no way Pakistan's going to give us a wicket which is going to suit us 100%. Um, or the reputation or, or legacy has it that uh, Raul Pindi doesn't necessarily favor the spinners. Um, I suppose only time will tell. We'll have to wait until the fourth to see what happens. But really, it's going to come down to the top six doing their job. They're, they're there for a reason. They're professionals. They need to score runs. Um, it's, it's a bet that's let us down uh, in the eight tests that uh, we've lost in the subcontinent. Actually, the bet has let us down. Um, and that we, the only the batsmen themselves can rectify it. Uh, you can put anybody in their respective positions, uh, but ultimately it's it's up to them to perform on the day. Um, whether it's Faf, whether it's Quinny, whether it's uh, whomever else, um, they need to step up uh, their game and they need to come to the party. Awesome. Okay, Kugle, take us home. Um, I just think Kugle uh, <laughs> loses uh, Rente. I think. I don't know. I, I get where he's coming from, but I, I, I still think um, that um, that Aiden and Rassi almost gave a blueprint on on how to on, on how to play those conditions. Yes, yes, th that lunchtime session it was slow, but they better slow. But sometimes you got to give respect to the bowlers, and sometimes, you know, I thought Yasir Shah and and you know, Ali bowled very well in that in, in a lunchtime session. And sometimes you just can't get your wicket away, and sometimes with Test cricket it's about surviving and. Um, you're obviously looking to score and being positive, but sometimes you do get bogged down. I think if you look at before Rassi, before Rassi got lost his wicket, if you look at the tea time session, we were betting a lot quicker. Boundaries were coming because I do think with Yasir Shah, if you see him off, he'll give you a, he'll give you a boundary ball every over. That's that's 
He's a very he's, he's quite expensive. So I think they did show a blueprint. I think there's something there for us to there's something there for us to work on. Because if you look in the first innings, it's almost like we tried to hit all their bowlers out the park and we threw our wicket away. Guys are playing booming drives. Quinton trying to slog sweep ten minutes into his innings. So so I, I look at it like we it almost looked like we were caught in between game plans. Do we attack these guys all on or do you or do you actually sit down, bog down, respect the bowlers? So I, I like for me, like I like for me, if I'm Pakistan, I'm not preparing a, a wicket that suits South Africa. I'm I'm one of those guys that 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 firmly believe if 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 we're hosting Sri Lanka or one of the Asian sides, that that's going to be a, a bouncy green wicket. If you go to England, it's going to be a seeming wicket. It's going to be a slow wicket, but seeming wicket. I I fully believe that in home ground advantage. And like I, I remember the I remember when India got in trouble for. Those test pitches at Naupu, I was like, man, like, like I would have done the exact same thing. I like, I, would have, I wouldn't cover those pitches for like two weeks. Like that's what I would do. Like uh, that's what I would do if, if I'm hosting, if I'm hosting the Proteas and they've got Stain, Philander. Like I'm making sure as soon as that, I'm making sure the wicket is turning from the toss. Like uh, that, that's that's what I would do. I mean, that's how, that's I feel like that's what you do with home ground advantage. So if I'm if I'm Pakistan, I'm leaving that pitch uncovered the whole day. If needs be, I'm, I'm asking a club club side to play cricket on that pitch. I'm asking kids to play on that pitch, and then just yeah, cover it, cover it up the night before, and then just, like I want I want Dean Alder to see rough on day one and be like, what is going on here? Like that's I want them to see they got to open the bowling with Yasir Shah. I'm like that's that's what I would do to be honest with you. I think I firmly believe in when you go on tour, it's got to be tough. It's got to be tough conditions. It's got to be it's got to be hard. But I do think that Rusty and Aiden did show a blueprint. I think sometimes yeah, like I said, if you look at Pujara. How many times he got hit in the body where it's like, listen, this I may I may only just score twenty. My strike needs to be twenty right now because Pat Cummins is steaming in. He's bowling so well. So right now I just need to just, I just need to survive and get to lunch and whatever. But yeah, but I'm I'm confident for the next test. I think um, Pakistan is there for the taking. I just obviously, if you don't score in the first innings, you you dig yourself into a hole, and that's what and that's what happened to us. And we have the bowlers for it. I think um, yeah, I think we we bowled well. At patches, obviously, we let the tail wag a little bit. But yeah, I think if you, if you don't score, if you don't score three hundred in the first innings, you are hiding to nothing, especially in those conditions. So, Google, can you just let us fans know where they can find you on social media, etc.? Yeah, so I'm on I'm on Twitter at uh, Cookie with the K underscore Kutle. Same um, Instagram as well, Cookie Kut, Cookie underscore Kutle, and then. TikTok as well, the exact same same handle. I'm not very creative with my handles, as you can tell. Um, yeah, so that's where you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and and TikTok. Just uh, yeah, just know this, my Twitter is full of a lot of cricket, uh, cr- cricket, 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 uh, cricket tweets. Especially, I'm grumpy in the morning as well. I'm grumpy on the approaches in the middle of a collapse as well. So just warning everyone who's gonna, who follows me on Twitter. <laughs> awesome man okay guys thanks a lot for the show um thanks a lot for tuning in i really enjoyed this conversation i hope you guys did too obviously don't forget to like comment share subscribe the likes you have to do so we can get the algorithm to put us into other people's feeds etc and so we can get seen obviously we want to hear your thoughts and hear your comments so comment please share it with your friends and family and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that we can grow this channel too also, don't forget to download the latest issue of the magazine. The link is on the screen and in the description. You can subscribe. It's completely free. And we're going to be updating you, obviously, every single month with a new issue. You can go to cricketfanaticsmag.com for all your updates. We are covering the entire series. So you'll see all our reviews, all our previews, everything over there. We have the action pieces. We have, obviously, test session moments as well on the channel, on, on, the, on the website as well. Um, don't forget to also become a patron today. Um, we have a patron is open for you guys to join this community. We want you guys to come on this road with us. I've put the links in the description as well as in the live chat as well. Um, so don't be afraid to, to join up and join this community with us. You'll get exclusive content directly to you as well as you can join our Discord server as well. If you have a business, small business, big business, looking to make sales online, even if your business is offline, Links are in the screen, uh, in the description, and you can contact all of us. You can contact Ravi as well if you want to get involved and promote your brand with Clicker Fanatics magazine. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. Thanks to Kuchle. Thanks to Ravi. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Cricket, Cricket Scholar, Lubu Balo. Thank you to all the fans. We'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care, everyone.